The Danish government will call nearly 20 million mink in the northern province of Jutland over fears of a mutated coronavirus threatening not only the citizens of Denmark, but the rest of the world. Can mink really infect people after being infected themselves by their keepers? Has the virus really mutated? How much more virulent can it be to people? Will that mutation thwart the efforts of scientists? Will the vaccinations currently in production still be effective? Answers to these and other questions coming up next. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Bruce Bowersfeld, DBM. Everyone calls me Dr. B. I'm a veterinarian in private practice, Southern California. This channel is about the best tips, tricks, and training available today to keep your pet healthy, give him a long and pain-free life, and make you worry-free. Well, what triggered my interest in this topic is the news releases coming out of Denmark. Last week, the Danish Ministry of Environment and Food released a statement announcing that they would cull the entire herd of mink, nearly two, strike that, nearly 20 million mink. I said million, not thousand, folks. Further, among other reasons, they announced that they had discovered a mutation of coronavirus, our coronavirus, that would allow the virus to invalidate the current vaccines on the program. What a shock. I was stunned to review that announcement for a myriad of reasons on several levels. As you know, I've been talking about coronavirus and mink and ferrets off and on since March the 15th this just is the icing on the cake because the Ministry of Health and the, the government in uh, Denmark are critically worried that a virus mutation can thwart all the efforts we have so far and have taken efforts to cull 20 million mink in the process. So, will, well, why do they think that the Oxford vaccine on the market in England I think the new Pfizer vaccine that's um, um, awaiting or going to be submitted to the FDA for emergency approval, why do they think those vaccines are going to be ineffective? What does this mean for those of us who own pet ferrets or mink? Question for the day, do you own a ferret? Have you ever owned a ferret? What's your experience with them as a pet? I love hearing from you. Share them if you can. Type them into the if you're live, type them into the chat section uh, here today. If you're uh, on recorded and seeing this uh, uh, later on on uh, YouTube, uh, put a comment. I love seeing your comments. I respond to all the comments as soon as I can find them. So, facts. The Danes have documented that 50% of the deaths in northern Jutland let me say it a different way. The Danes have documented that the human deaths in, let me say that a different way, I can't get it out of my mouth here. The Danes have documented that 50% of all the deaths related to coronavirus in Denmark are related to mink ferret farms. 50% of human deaths related to uh, infections interrelated to mink farms. That's staggering. The entire mink industry worldwide, including the U.S., is besieged with sick mink from the, from the coronavirus. Uh, we were talked uh, several weeks ago, almost a month ago, that Utah quarantined all the mink farms uh, and the like. Denmark has a severe problem, as we're talking about. The Netherlands have a problem. Spain has a problem. Um, worldwide, the mink are besieged with human coronavirus. The facts is that the entire mink population in the U.S. and the rest of the world, Spain, Denmark, the Netherlands, um, is stuck with sick mink. Um, it's now well documented that the mink contracted the environment, the in <laughs> it's documented the mink contracted the infection from their owners or their handlers or their keepers. So for sure, mink can infect people. It's well documented in the Netherlands and Denmark mink farms. Remember, months ago, 
we talked about da uh, um, uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, had mink farms where there were some feral cats that were testing positive. Um, no shock, but those poor feral cats were getting it from the mink and not from anywhere else. So, people are reinfected for sure. That, so what that means is the poor mink are contracting the virus from the people that are taking care of them. Then the sick mink are able to transmit it back to people. So now SARS coronavirus 2, COVID-19, is a zoonosis where man and mink are mixing the infection. People can give it the mink. The mink can replicate. The mink can replicate. Yeah, the mink can replicate really well. The mink can. The virus can replicate in the mink, and lots of mink get sick. Then the sick mink can give it back to people that are near them. That's what a zoonosis is all about. Why should we worry? Denmark's thousand miles away, isolated. It's near the Arctic. The mink are expendable. At least the Danish government thinks 20 million mink are expendable. We can just let the scientists figure it out and let the politicians make the decisions. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that type of scenario. So I'm really interested. I'm interested for a lot of different reasons, but I want to know what's going on with these mink because mink are not part of my practice, but we once upon a time had a ferret and their close cousins and they were a big part, he was a big part, of our life. So to date, the initial, concept, the initial consensus opinion of scientists worldwide is curiosity and not alarm. They're not panicking. And most of all, like myself, they're suspicious without any data of how and why the, the Danish ministry or the government says the virus is going to invalidate the vaccines because that's really the kind of the buzzword that uh, worries all of it, does, doesn't it not? Uh, we're all on the threshold of our seats and our chairs and pincushions uh, waiting for the so-called the wonder vaccine to, uh, to, be, uh, to be announced. The Oxford vaccines uh, in advanced clinical trials in the UK, Pfizer is uh, attempting to, um, uh, their news release this week said that they're going to uh, try to submit a, an emergency FDA approval uh, by the end of the month. So we're on the way to protecting ourselves, we hope. But now Denmark says no. Put, well, you need to put things in perspective. The word mutation is a scary thing to most people. We're conditioned by Hollywood, by novels, the, the virus that mutates and destroys the computers, the blob or whatsoever that, uh, uh, that's going to... Uh, um, to going to get us all, so to speak. So we're hypersensitive to the word mutation because we think it's always bad, very rare, and um, evil in this entire concept. None of that is very true. We don't, don't expect Hollywood to be true for us, that's for certain. Um, but the fact is that mutations happen and occur all the time, all the time. Um, a plethora of mutations have already been documented in the existing coronavirus infection in just the first few, first few months of our investigation of this infection. That's expected. It is, not, it is not really newsworthy. The community is at least not surprised or concerned about that, and that makes me comfortable, I think. The mutation is now, this one that Denmark is referring to is called the Cluster 5, the Cluster 5 uh, mutation. It's apparently in a different slightly spot on the, um, on the genome than the other mutations that have been documented so far because perhaps that's the only reason that they're upset. I don't know any more about that other than what they've reported. Neither do a lot of other scientists around the world. So the consensus of scientists worldwide is that at least at this point, there's a lot of skepticism and no need to panic. That's all good news. There are a lot of different outcomes that we might expect. Multiple scenarios, some good, some not. For example, serial passage. Serial passage is I get infected with a cold. People around me get infected with the same cold. It goes down the line and around. 
So that's the process of which the virus, every time it replicates, has an opportunity to do it correctly or to mutate, so to speak. Um, Serial passage may make it more virulent. It might make it less virulent. The new strain that has developed could ev evade the vaccines as the Netherlands are worried about. However, serial passage could make it less virulent. It could become more virulent to the mink than it has been to people. In other words, the virus could decide it's pretty happy in the mink. And I guess one of the reasons that um, um, the Danes are so worried is it pretty much is documented that it is pretty happy in the mink. So if it starts replicating the mink and becomes a mink disease, it might become less virulent for people as the mink change it themselves. Hypothetical? Yes. Has it happened in the past? Yes. So, all that's really speculation. What's the big deal if the species, what's the big deal if the virus jumps species anyway? Scientists call this species jump over, or jumping from species to species, spillover. Species jumps and spillover always makes scientists and myself worried because, after all, that's how we ended up with the COVID-19 pandemic. Go back almost a year now, the Wuhan markets in China, bats, little things that they're selling to eat, crowded spaces, virus replicating, somebody gets sick, and waha, we've got a pandemic. That was spillover. But we still need to keep this in perspective. Viruses generally are host-specific. For example, what would be a good virus? Herpes virus. Herpes virus is very host-specific. Human herpes virus, cold sores. I can't give my soul cold sores to my dog. I can't give my cold sores to my, uh, f to my ferret. I can't give my cold sores to my cat. I can give my cold sores to my wife. But they're very species specific. All mammalian species that I'm familiar with have a species specific herpes virus. Horses, pigs, cattle, swine, um, ferrets, cats, dogs, period. We expect viruses to behave themselves and stay with themselves. So when the spillover curves, we got a whole new, it's a new ball game. You know, it's, it's no longer six to five, it's now tied at the bottom of the ninth and we go into extra innings. Uh, well, another example I just thought of, the, the human cold has a, more than one virus that um, is responsible for the human cold, but there's at least four old school, not our new school, coronaviruses that are known to have caused part of our common cold complex. Those four coronaviruses were once thought to be spillover from other species in the humans at some point in the past. From who or what, no one's pretty sure, no one knows for sure, but the genome points to other species as opposed to it mutating spontaneously from within ourselves. Flu is a prime example of spillover events and uh, other types of things that have occurred from pigs and poultry from time to time. <sighs> Go back to 2009, 29, 2009, the flu pandemic of HNNH, H1N1, H1 flu pandemic, 2009, pigs, started in pigs, folks. If you don't remember that, started in pigs. And the pigs infected people, and we had a pandemic of h one N1 flu. Ebola outbreaks were viral outbreaks, spillovers. To me, the mink situation is entirely different. Entirely different. It's not a virus unknown to humans. It's been replicating in humans for the last year. Now it's jumped from people to an animal species. That's, a, um, that's important in the first place. If it's a dead-end host, which apparently dogs and cats are dead-end host, you know, the handful of dogs have been documented that having, have been positive for testing, maybe symptomatic, no reproduction, uh, no spillover, no, um, no happiness of the virus in dogs, it just dies out. The dog is a end host. The cat is apparently a end host. The ferret's not an end host. The mink is not an end host. 
the virus has adapted uh, severely or happily in, in replicating in, in these poor little mink. So now, as it's replicating in the mink, it's jumping back in the people. I'm not sure what the precedent for that is uh, um, in, my, um, uh, in my experience and knowledge of epidemiology. So the spillover effect has now gone um, um, warp speed, so to speak. Ferrets, what about ferrets? Why am I all concerned about ferrets? Well, ferrets are cousins to mink. Ferrets are more, as far as coronavirus is concerned, ferrets are like twin brothers of, of the mink. Because when it, um, well, let's back up. Mustelidae is the family, we call it the mink weasel family, but mink, weasels, ferrets, otters, polecats, all make up members of the family Mustelidae. Um, ferrets are now getting coronavirus from people. Coronavirus replicates easily in ferrets, and the ferrets are easily giving it them to themselves. How is this possible? Well, it's possible because of the receptors. A receptor essentially is a spot that the virus comes upon and attaches to and it gets into the it gets into the body. If you have if you have a porcelain cup and this is the cell wall and viruses start invading it can't get in. It it can't get in at all. It's a uh, it's a steel trap. It's very protected. For the virus to get in, it has to have a window. And that window is called an attachment of a receptor. So if I turn my cup around and I've got this little handle, this handle could represent the receptor. And this quarter representing the virus finds its way onto the handle and it can attach there and hold on and then the virus eventually sucks it up, excuse me, the, the cell walls, the cell body eventually sucks it up and goes inside and then the virus starts replicating in the cup and the cup gets full of quarters or dimes and nickels and spills over and the body now gets sick. So our the SARS coronavirus that we're dealing with has a receptor that's now uh, identified as the ACE2 receptor. People have lots of them in their lungs, some in their intestinal tract. Dogs have almost none, cats have a few more. We're going to look at that uh, here on a, uh, on, a, on a continuum in a second. Ferrets have got a ton of them. So that's the problem. That's why I've been saying for months that ferrets are the, the biggest risk in our families and our households right now. So if we put the two together, if ferrets and weasels and otters and mink are the same family and mink, mink easily are getting it from the handlers, I'm 100% certain that ferrets can easily get it from a family member that has coronavirus. In conclusion, mink and ferrets get human coronavirus. Yes. Can mink really infect people after being infected themselves by their keepers? Yes. Has the virus really mutated? Yes. Is it now more virulent to people? To be determined. No one knows for sure, but in our scenario right now, it's not that likely. And it's not that likely that the vaccines are going to be thwarted. Time will tell. But people are, when we have a lot of smart people working on things. I'm confident that they're going to uh, come out with a vaccine that everybody world, world, worldwide is aggressively trying to, to produce. What about our pet ferrets? Well, they're our great companions. You know, we had a ferret a couple of decades ago. His name was Coda, um, great little kid. Our next segment, we'll talk about preventing coronavirus and our ferrets, making sure that if somebody in the house is sick, that they don't get sick, and most importantly, making sure that no one else in the house gets sick um, after all is said and done. Well, that's all for today. If you benefited from today's program, please hit the like button below. For more information about ferrets, mink, and coronavirus, check out these videos here. This channel is about the best tips, tricks, and training available today to keep your pet healthy, give him a long and pain-free life, and make you worry-free.